Welcome back to the Retro Revivals YouTube channel. Hope you guys had a great Easter. Yeah, we did, and um, we'll show you real quick. I had some fun with the kids making these square deviled eggs. So if you missed that video where we got the square egg maker, it definitely came in handy. And they were delicious. Square they, or not square. They actually were. So in this video, we were planning to get back to work on our holiday rambler. We really want to get it ready for camping this summer, and we're going to. Um, but we had spring break coming up, and we thought maybe we'd want to do something. So, um, yeah, I mentioned to Tyler, why don't we consider Harvey? So Christy and I had a conversation. I'll play the part of Christy. She'll play the part of me. This and this is, the, this is the discussion <laughs> about us going on a potential spring break camping trip. Spring break's coming up. I would really like to go on a camping trip. Do you think we should take Harvey somewhere? No. <laughs> no, he said... <laughs> you said... <laughs> Well, spring breaks in a few days, and I don't trust that we could take Harvey anywhere very far. Why not? Because, <laughs> because of the vibration in the thing. <laughs> Gee, <laughs> you're so specific. <laughs> What was the other issue you cited? So I've never serviced the transmission in Harvey. I thought it would be a good time to do a filter change, change the fluid, make sure that we're good that way. Second thing is it does have a slight drivetrain vibration somewhere. And so I had not diagnosed what that was yet. But if we were going to cruise down the road at, say, 55 for an extended period of time, it was probably going to shake something loose and not to mention it's pretty aggravating when you're riding in something that's just constantly under vibration. Yeah. So I thought, well, that stuff sounds doable in a couple of days. We'll get it done. We'll head out of town just for a night or two. Um, and that didn't exactly happen, but we did, we broke apart. Like I'll do these tasks. You do these tasks. And you kind of ran into some trouble that you'll see here in this video. It wound up being a little more in depth than we had hoped. Um, my stuff went pretty well. So we'll go ahead and get started showing Jack and I installing an awesome stereo system. Sounds good. Tyler is underneath us working on the transmission or something that's not quite as important as what Jack and I are going to take care of. So um, we talked about going on a trip and of course, Tyler wants to make sure hopefully we're not going to break down. Jack was concerned with whether we were going to have some tunes. So um, we've been working with a company called Herdio and they provided for us four speakers. These are actually waterproof. You could use them on a boat if you wanted to. Um, but we have four of these four inch speakers that Jack and I are going to install. Hopefully we won't need Tyler's help because he's busy. We've never done audio before, so it'll be fun. So Jack's 15. He's probably going to get his first car soon, someday. And I think you need to know how to do this kind of stuff. Like to really trick out your ride, you know, impress the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mom. Okay. Awkward. We wound up ordering two white for the back to go with the cabinets. Um, two black, they're in a separate box, to go in the front to match the front. Um, the company was really easy to work with and determining do we want them both connected. They're Bluetooth speakers, so we had to decide do we want you know, to play through the whole camper or just front and back separately. Um, and they sent some pictures to help us decide. So this first option you would connect to a Bluetooth device like your phone and it would play through all four speakers. We actually ended up going with the second option where you could have two speakers in the back playing something different than the two speakers in the front. And hopefully if the phone or device is capable, you could also connect to all four at the same time and play the same thing throughout. So we're gonna give it a shot. Jack's gonna open up the box to the black speakers. It's got some directions on top. We've got speaker wire. Ooh. And a four inch speaker. Feels pretty hefty. That's nice. They are heavier than I thought they would be, don't you think? Yeah. For the size. Is that it? All screws. And little screws. 
Oh, Dad's really banging. Like, screw. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 Whoops. <laughs> Okay, we did the um, quality control drop test. In a separate package, we got the Bluetooth receiver and a power cord, which actually, hopefully we don't break anything, but we're planning to cut this cord and just plug it straight into DC and ditch the AC adapter portion of it. But um, if you wanted to plug it straight into an outlet, that's an option. In the front of the van, here is a hole for where the old speaker was. This is actually a five inch hole and we ordered four inch speakers. So we're gonna need to make a little backing plate for that. Paint it black and hopefully it looks pretty good. For that backing plate, I found this in the garage. This is a leftover flooring from Harvey in there. So we're gonna see if we can use this. It's not very thick, but it's um, durable. So we'll see, we're gonna cut couple squares that are seven by seven. <laughs> it's the power of Harbor Freight. Good job. You want to spray paint or do you want me to? Uh, I want to spray paint. All right. So before we paint it, we should drill out the holes. This is a four and one quarter inch hole saw. We're thinking that it's going to be the right size. So let's give it a whirl. <laughs> and I'm gonna give it a test fit. So this is what the white speakers look like. These will go in the white cabinets in the back. That looks good to me. What do you think? Looks pretty good. All right, spray them up. Right next to each of these terminals, there's a plus or a minus. So which one's that? Positive? Positive. Okay, so what negative. color are we going to that? Red to the left side, the positive side. Yep. And then black to negative. Did I put it on the right way? I, I don't think it matters. <laughs> Red to positive, black to negative. You wanna, we can screw it up in that hole now. Ready? Yep. There we go. That's good. good. Yeah, and we're, we'll build a little false bottom to this cabinet here to kind of block that when we're done. So we're not banging into the wires, but yeah, that looks good. I'll give you the screws. That's good. Oh, did you stab the speaker? No, I stopped over here. All right, try not to do too much stabbing. Didn't mean to. That's good. Go. Oh. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Jack and I have been tracing some wires. So what we have is all of these lights are on switches. The thing that's not on switches is the fans. So we need to get our 12 volt from the same wire that's feeding those fans right now. So we think we know which one it is. And we're going to screw this up into the cabinet. This is our receiver little amp box, Bluetooth amp box. And... Um, Lop this cord off and hope for the best. What could go wrong? I was looking for some electrical tape and found this, which is not brown rice. So that's a bummer. I have to clean all this out, but who knows? Are they still living in here somewhere?
Ella is babysitting and Jack decided that he wanted to go hang out with Ella and the baby for a little bit. So I have a fill in helper <laughs> just in time because I feel like you'll be able to do this heat shrinking wiring stuff a lot quicker than I would be able to. <laughs> Jeez, oh, okay. yeah, my feelings, if I had any, would be hurt right now. Oh. Christy asked ever so pleasantly <laughs> if, in any sense of the word, could I get further away from her? Um, <laughs> yes. Well, I, I feel like we're growing distant now. <laughs> no, just kidding. This is what I'm faced with here. We have an AC cord and a DC plug. It's an AC to DC converter. So I am going to cut our cord. Oh, here it goes. Boom. Oh my There's gosh. no going back now. I thought it was going to be more of a like drum roll kind of moment, <laughs> but you know, I, it's like ripping off a band aid. So now all I got to do is strip back our little bit of shielding here. It'll expose a couple of wires underneath here. Okay. Bonus. It is red and black. So I feel like we're pretty confident in what is positive and what is negative. Christy has been nice enough to label which wire is our uh, fan wire that we're splicing into. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the wire. Okay, oh, jeez! You oh, take. It's all right. Oh my gosh. We were supposed to shut the power off oh, first. It's DC. It's not going to hurt oh, anything. You scared the <sighs> poo so, out of me. Okay. <laughs> we will shut off the electricity. <laughs> this is the wire that was going to our fan. All right. Get that stripped back. This is our power wire coming in from our fuse box. I mean, to be fair, if I would have clarified for them that we were using this, how we're using it, mm -hmm. I think that they do s send some of them with the DC connection instead of the AC like we had. So that's probably my bad. So I've got my feed wire coming in. I've got my, I'm still going back to my fan wire. I'm just going to add my little black uh speaker wire the power wire i should say for the speakers to the mix Let's move that out of the way so i don't know if you can get a good shot of that but you can see all the wires are in there right behind that solder sleeve all right i think when we went to youtube school they said don't do a lot of narration with things in your mouth <laughs> oh. do you skip that class i must have i thought you were taking notes <laughs> all right well hold on they also said don't blow up your camper when people are watching right i'm <laughs> that's probably i think that was in the first lesson wasn't it? <laughs> all right here we go now things are going to happen all right so this is what our splice looks like this is our load side with our little dc plug uh, going to our fan, and then this is the supply side. So I just doubled up the wires coming out of the splice there, and should be good to go. So we hook up the speakers, basically. That's it. And we just have to do the ones up front, but let's see if this works. Oh, there's my helper boy. Yeah, look at him. That's where I should be right now. All right, so I have my speaker wires, red, positive, black, negative. And this is the left side wire, so I'm going to put it in the left side, put it right in the top here, hold it down while I screw. Yeah, and nice. it's Good. held right in there. So now I put the negative in the left and negative side. Tighten it back up. in there good awesome all right so now we take the right side the red wire is in the positive side oh shoot make sure it's not all frizzled up in there <laughs> frizzled <laughs> should be the last one right here mm -hmm, boy there we go oh yeah oh yeah ah. So Jack, we don't have very many music options we can play without getting a copyright strike. So here's what you get. It sounds good. 
is that anything in my <laughs> All right, so I just grabbed these. They were dry, and we'll get them all screwed in. And yeah, we'll do the speakers up front, and unless we have any major issues, we'll just show you when it's complete. Twenty minutes later. It wasn't really working with the seats in. I like it. I like it a lot. Jack got this one wired up and I think we're ready to test it. So we want to put this one actually into a uh, DC that's keyed with the ignition. And so when we turn the car off, the front speakers turn off. I think that's what we want to do. So Tyler's busy right now. I don't want him to tear apart the ignition area. So we're just going to try it with our extension cord and see what happens. Oh, I heard this side. Did that side do it? Yeah, I heard it. I heard that All side. All right. Okay, let's test some music. Here's my phone. This is the back speakers we did earlier. If I scroll down, now it shows the front speakers. So I'll, I can rename those later, but let's see. Pair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Can I connect to both? Can I, oh, it's connected to both. Look at that. All right, so let's try. <laughs> you want me to try? I don't. I don't have any music that's not copyrighted. <laughs> We're going back to it. The old. Where is it? Is it playing behind you? It's playing up here for sure. No, it's not. It's not. No, not mine. It's only playing up here. Oh shoot! All right, let me try it again. Are both playing? These ones are playing. No. You're stopped. Yeah. Oh, so one at a time. One at a time. Hallelujah. So I have Android, and I think I just figured out how to play both front and back at the same time. So first you get your public domain music, and then you scroll down and you hit media output. So right now it's showing only Harvey front. I can go Harvey back. I should be able to independently adjust the audio on each of those. So let's give it a whirl. It's working. It works. Nice. Yeah. Jack got sick of me tinkering on my phone trying to figure it out. So he went in for the night. Um, I showed you Android. It works. I can do front and back with the same music, even though they're completely separate systems, which is amazing. I knew we'd be able to have where the kids could listen to something in the back. And if we're driving something else in the front. Um, but I was hoping that we'd be able to at some point listen to all the same music or something together. Like if we're going through a national park, sometimes we like to put on the little tour guide thing. Um, so then we can all listen to the same thing as we go. So we are very appreciative to Herdio for the speakers. We'll put a link in the description and you can also save money by using our link. So please go ahead and click on that. It also helps out our channel and these were the 4-inch, the 5104s, the Bluetooth model. Um, they seem, the sound sounds great. I know we can't really play a lot of music for you to hear, but they do sound great. They look good. They seem sturdy, easy to install. And overall, I think they're going to be a great addition to Harvey here. So we really appreciate it. There's a couple things that we need to take care of before we take Harvey on any sort of extended road trip. I would like to uh, change the transmission fluid and filter and also swap out the shocks. There's a few other things that we're going to work on along the way, but we'll take care of that in a little bit. Let's get started. So good old Harvey has over 90,000 miles on him now. I don't know when the last time this transmission fluid was changed, but we're going to change that and we're going to change the, uh, the filter along with it. And while we're in here, I want to get in here and uh, change this seal. You can see where it's dripping there on the tail shaft. There's also a bushing in there that if I have any success, I want to replace that too because that wears and uh, may even lead to some of our drive shaft vibration. Um, 
here in a little bit after I get this drive shaft down, I'm going to show you uh, another issue I found. First things first, we're going to get all this fluid drained out of here. So while that transmission drains a little bit, I am going to uh, squirt some blaster of the PB here on our U-bolt straps and bolts, and we will pull this drive shaft out of here in just a minute. So it's easy breezy. All it needs to do is go into the transmission a little bit. We should be home free. Come on, buddy. I am baffled. <laughs> out of there and then slide into the transmission. Let me understand. A new universal joint here pretty quick. I did jack up the one rear wheel so I can spin the drive shaft so in theory it does give me a little bit more wiggle room now to uh, move things around. I mean, why won't you just come out? hoping I would have created enough slack that I would be able to get it out of here but my uh out of the back of the transmission that'll be something okay Whew. it'll be interesting to see what happens oh. oh it's gonna slide right out of there what in the world what's wrong with this scenario is my drive shaft too long is I don't even know Finally got the drive shaft out. It was a bear. Uh, I am nervous about getting it back together at this point, but uh, it's good that we got it apart. I'll show you here in just a second what I'm talking about. So here's the uh, universal joint that went into the rear differential. I'm telling you, they were not greased very well and they were getting pretty burned up, it looks like. Well, that needle bearing fell over in that cap. But anyway, see those ridges? Those are where the needle bearings had froze up on the uh, Universal. Oh my gosh, that's wild. That is definitely a super big issue. That was prone to fail shortly. And uh, also another big reason why our, uh, we were going down the road and we had some significant vibration. And this Universal is very sloppy, um, wore out 
no doubt. But anyway, so I've got to get a couple universal joints, one for either end, and uh, we'll put that back together. Early the next morning. I did not sleep well last night. How about you? I slept fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I didn't sleep well because I had dreams of drive shafts all through my head all night long. Well, what I came up with is I think that it isn't the original drive shaft. I think they got a longer drive shaft than they should have, and that's why it uh, had such a difficult time coming out. So, Jack and I are going to measure for a new drive shaft and hopefully we'll get this thing sorted out. When I call out the number, you're gonna remember it because we forgot to bring our pen and paper. Leave me be, boy. I'm having problems. <laughs> I'm gonna pull the drive shaft out of there. Oh, not on my head. Not <laughs> right on your head, but. Ah. Okay, watch. He's gonna look, kill me, guys. Look. No, watch. Oh, watch. Wait, wait. What? Oh, look at it, see? Piece of cake. Oh, hey, look at that. You still holding it on there? Yeah. Okay, 62 and a half to the center of the yoke. I just got off the phone with the driveline shop. They said they might be able to help me. I've got to take them the old drive shaft. Maybe they could shorten it and rebalance it, or if not, we'll get a new drive shaft. Back under Harvey once again. I've got the wheels chalked. I've got it all jacked up. I am ready to take down the transmission pan. I've partially drained it, and now we are ready to get the remainder of the fluid uh, down to our armpit. A lot worse. Yay! I did something. It's not crazy bad. I mean it's dark but I'm not getting big chunks out of the bottom of the pan. While I've been underneath Harvey, Christy has been working on her carpentry skills, showcasing her talents. Uh, I didn't cut a single board, but we found this old box when we were cleaning out the storage unit. I think it was from my dad's garage. And Harbor Freight just so happened to have casters on sale. So look what we have here. Little scrap wood organizationer. Do you call this a tote or a caddy? I call it a shuttle. <laughs> right, we do have uh, quite a few projects that are going on behind the scenes right now. We did make a big move of tools and stuff from our garage to the barn this morning, and we need some organization down now. Good job. Thanks. We are ready to take out this seal. Let me show you what we've got going here. This is the transmission tail shaft seal here. There's a little weep hole right in the bottom of this. And uh, it's been leaking fluid, so it needs a new seal. But also there's a bushing that I'm hoping is behind here. And I'll show you that after we get the seal out. So now that we've got our seal out, we're gonna move on to the bushing. The bushing is this thin piece of metal here going around the inside of the tail shaft housing. So that's a wear item, um, not exactly easy to change um, with the transmission in the vehicle, but I don't really have an option. So we are going to get that pulled out of there and swap in a new one and put a new seal in. I finally got it out. And if you have five or six hours to kill, I highly recommend this. I definitely struggled forever and ever but after it started to move it came right out <laughs> the installation is the reverse of the removal you carefully install the bushing and then the seal um, now all I have to do is add the drive shaft back I also have a transmission filter that I'm replacing I'll show you what that looks like I've got to uh, put a gasket on there the pan and then fill it back up with fluid and we should be good to go so this is our new filter this is the old one, not looking so hot. Um, just dirty, grimy, a uh, little bit of grit in there. So this new filter just goes in with three Phillips screws. All you have to do is uh, take note of where the old one was 
and orient the new one in there, th do the three screws, and you're back in business. All right, the time has finally arrived. Let's get this gasket on and the pan back on the transmission. We've got our new drive shaft back from our driveline shop. I wanted to point out the reason why I took it there is two parts. One, it had a big dent in it right here, or a sizable dent. And the other was the fact that it was too long. At least I felt it was too long. And uh, it didn't want to come out of the RV very easily. So I took it to them. They said they could not balance it. So what they came up with was this new drive shaft. It is shorter than the old one by about three quarters of an inch. It does have new U-joints in it and they cleaned up the slip yoke here that goes in the back of the transmission. So I'm going to see if this is all going to fit underneath Harvey and hopefully barring any major setbacks, we will uh, have a drive shaft back in it and all the drive line will be back together. So I'm going to lift this drive shaft up. This new one's heavier than the old one. So the slip yoke's got to go in the yeah, lower it. Yep. back of the transmission here. So I am ultimately just trying to line up these splines. Your angle's wrong. Which, where are you? Lower, going? yeah. Lower, like that? No, uh, little, yeah, right there. Like that? Oh, yeah. wait a minute. I think we have some engagement. Oh, there Whoa. We go. oh. boy. It engaged. Oh, it's engaging. <laughs> Just in time. I was running out of steam. Whew. All right. Well, this concrete's cold. I don't know if you knew that. So no, I'm going to stand up. News to me. All right. I've got the straps back on. The bolts back through. Everything seems to be good. We're all set. We now have a new balanced drive shaft. So now all we have to do is... Add the transmission fluid. Should be about four quarts and we'll be back in business. Just topping her off. Hopefully it's not running straight onto the floor. That would be disappointing at this juncture. Tyler spent a few days on the floor underneath old Harvey here and then had to go out of town for work for a night. So um, we haven't been able to test drive it. So I think we're gonna give it the old test drive. Oh, man. And hopefully make it through the mud. That's a concern. Right. Well, but. the mud doesn't stop us. The drive shaft falling out will. No. Should be good to go. <laughs> Reassuring. Right. Got to hook the battery back up. I did notice that the monitor also seems to be a drain on the battery. And over time, we have developed uh, a dead battery. Oh, so. for the backup camera? Yep. So we need to get it on a switch or something. That would or... probably be a good idea. Okay, so at what point, like, I mean, how do you know, can we tell before you actually start driving if the drive shaft's going to do something crazy? Not really, but it's not going to do anything crazy. I guess in theory, you could jack up the back wheels of the camper and get them off the ground and uh, start it. Ain't nobody got time for that. Exactly. All right, let's All right. do this. Let's do it. All right, this is what we're facing out here. It is mud. It's not as wet as it actually looks, but um, yeah, it's it's a pretty bad situation. I'll stay back here and just try to catch the get stuck in the mud action. <laughs> All right. Oh, jeez! <laughs> Holy crap! You all right? My whole life flashed before my eyes. That was a backfire. I take it. Yeah, that was oh a bad my time. God. Do you remember when you did that at the gas station and scared that guy? Right. Like that? Remember when I did it over here and got the neighbor too? Oh my gosh. <laughs> he was, okay. he well, was sitting on his porch. It was harmless. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, ready? Is he going to do it again? Well, let's hope not. All right. <laughs> ah. Almost. Oh, come on. Terrified. <laughs> and so this is the part of our story where our ignition troubles flare up. One more try. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, two more times. Well, is it doing it where it tries when you let go still? So, yes, there is apparently um, 
there's apparently a couple wires, ignition wires, that uh, control your cranking, like your 12 volts that goes to your coil during your cranking. Okay, wait, can I tell you right now, I smell gas very strongly. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's normal? Well, this is not a normal thing and it should be discussed because it's not normal. Yeah, so our mechanical fuel pump is uh, giving us overload here. It would have been nice if the engine started, but we tried a number of things. Ignition switch, coil, um, uh, a few different, um, the ballast resistor, a few different things. Even the electronic ignition control module, it's all been replaced. So, there's still light at the end of the tunnel. I think we can get it figured out. All right. I am going to try a temporary measure. Um, just to get it started, I'm just going to measure juice to my uh, coil here. Do you want to help me out? You got Maybe. an extra hand? All right, this red lead needs to just touch the nut the there. Nut. Yeah. All right, so it only shows six volts, which is half. <laughs> yeah, half. I'm going to key it on, okay, like I'm cranking it. All right, you ready? I don't know. Am I gonna get shocked? No. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Whoops. Okay, I slipped off. I guess. All right. So it Panicked. showed okay. it showed us about eight volts there. Ultimately, we would like to have a twelve volt constant when we're cranking. Our test drive here was going to be part test drive and part pickup jack from lacrosse practice. So we have about an hour till we have to be there. <laughs> Is this gonna? This oh, an hour, temporary of time. fix gonna take a while. I, I hope not. I'm taking a wire from just a spare wire. I'm taking a wire and putting it on the positive side terminal to the coil and running it directly to the positive side of the battery. Okay. And this should give us fire. Well, it'll give us something. Speaking of which, where's the fire extinguisher? I don't know. That's a good question. I wrapped our extra wire on the coil. Uh, hopefully it makes good connection. Got it connected to the battery. We're just gonna give it another try here. <laughs> okay, so without it, we get six to eight, and now you wanna try it with it? Yes. This is your little bonus wire. My bonus wire. Bonus All right. wire, hold it to. All right, so yes, we get 12, our 12 volts is there now, okay? okay. All right, now it, okay. can you? There, our 12 volts is there. I'm gonna crank it now, okay? okay. You're, you're, oh, it almost started. Your wire fell off. It's actually on my probe. <laughs> oh, what'd you have there? It was close to uh, uh, 10 volts. I wasn't recording after all that. Uh, sorry. I didn't know you were gonna try it again. So if we drive this somewhere, we just won't turn it off. Then, Correct. Right? <laughs> Do we have enough gas? Yeah, we got. Okay. We got enough gas. Oh boy. We're looking forward to getting some gravel in here. All right, I think we're getting ready to actually go. Are you buckled? Yeah. All right, here we go. Beauty. All right. That's a nice camera. Yeah. Not upside down. Definitely right side up. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> getting out on the road. <laughs> and uh, it just occurred to me that we were all worried about it starting. And it took our mind off of the whole drive shaft thing, which yeah. is working fine. So who would have thought? <laughs> I know. Actually, I feel better about the drive shaft now as opposed to uh, before because uh, of what I know. The U joints definitely were going to be a failure point sooner rather than later. And the fact that uh, it was dented, you know, that's going to throw everything out of balance. So yeah. I think. So do you think that was the primary thing causing our vibration? Like, is there a chance we get out there and aren't shaking like crazy now or? I have, I mean, I'm at like 92.67% that we are not going to shake anymore. Wow. Okay. I know, that's bold, isn't it? That's can I lower that? Let's make it. <laughs> can I lower let's, that? Let's make it 74.397. All right. We need to wash our windows again.
Okay. We should have drinks there so we could see the if they're rattling. I, I don't want to jinx it. I mean, we're only going like 30, but I don't feel it yet. Do you? No. And I'm not. Uh, it, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, that I thought that it was a driveline issue when we had the vibration thing going before. And so this is, yeah, a, a confirmation. This verifies that everything that we did, I think, made a difference. This is going down the road pretty good at 55. How's it going, Ella? Go ahead. We're not really at highway speed yet, and it's at about 2,500 RPM. So say you get it cranked up to 55, 60, I bet you're at about 3,000. We'll, we'll find a good stretch of road and verify that, but that is not going to be good for fuel consumption. We may have to look at like, overdrive options. Sounds pricey. <laughs> yeah. So I've convinced myself that I want to try something. Um, I read online and read a lot of the comments and GM makes a, an HEI module. It's high energy ignition. It's what they use in all the distributors since like the mid seventies. But anyway, what I've read, it's a really easy conversion for a Dodge or a Ford to use an HEI module. And what that'll do is it'll eliminate our ballast resistor, our electronic control module. It'll just really be the go between our uh, ignition switch and the distributor. I'll get into more of this after we start our install, I guess. And I want to stop by the Dollar Tree and get an old, not old, a new cheap stick of deodorant because people are saying that that might help our belt stop squealing. I hate that. That's my least favorite thing about this is that belt squeal. Um, I don't think that's my least favorite thing. I mean, it can not start all at once, but when it does start, it better not holler at us. You know what I mean? Holler at us. <laughs> I got the speed stick cool clean. Here, you want to pull that thing off? <laughs> yeah. It smells good? It? I don't know, does it? Oh, yeah. Handsome. Harvey's oh. going to smell handsome. Wait, where's the belt? <laughs> well, there's two belts. And they're Which conveniently... Which one's the squeaky one? Well, that's uh, a good question, too. I can't tell you which one is the culprit. I've tried to tighten both. I feel like it's the power steering, but I'm not sure. Um, I may have to do this from underneath. We'll see. Oh, boy. Why is there, like, a sinking traffic jam here all of a sudden? <laughs> Parked in the middle of nowhere. We're swarmed by vehicles right now. So just try to rub it on the inside of the belt. <laughs> That'll be easy, right? I don't know why you want to do this while it's running. So it so it rubs on the belt. I don't know. I thought that's what the people really? in the comments said to do. I'm about that far away from the fan. Well, don't get in the fan. I wish I could really show what was happening. <laughs> Try to get it on the inside of the belt, I think. <laughs> Maybe it's not supposed to be running. This does seem overly dangerous. It does to Maybe me too. Maybe people just want to see us injured. I don't know. It smells good. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, how do you say, difficult? Difficile. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't taken Spanish in quite some time. Alright, there's some. Okie doke. I guess we'll try that and see Let's how see that what works. what you do to it. Man, as long as there's no blood on the, the uh, Sick. deodorant. Alright, punch it. People are starting to look at us. Oh. Uh, it's still rather squeaky. <laughs> um, I think you did the wrong belt. I did both belts. You did? I can only get to one side of the belt, and I'm not doing the outside of the belt. I mean, I'm doing the inside. But the angle is so violent and sharp in there. I can't right. without hitting the fan. So blade. maybe we should do it when it's off and like manually crank it over. Probably like not. Turn it. We'll, we'll know. have to do something different. All right, we got to go get Jack. Okay. Let's see it. So the only one they had in stock was this performance version. 
I mean, it should make a difference. Um, but it is an Excel part. Does it make a difference to the pocketbook? Slightly. Ten dollars. <laughs> Ten dollars more? Yeah, but I didn't have to wait. I had it right now. Oh my gosh. All right. So anyway, simple four wire hookup. Takes a little bit of uh, messing with the ignition wires. But like I said, it'll simplify things and it should be rock solid and eliminate our problem where when you're cranking, uh, it doesn't want to start until you let off the key. It should solve all that. Oh boy. In theory. Yeah. In theory is your favorite new term, I think. <laughs> In theory, you're probably right. <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> Welcome home. Okay, we got Jack back here. He's asking for a drink for the road trip. We're literally gonna be home in five minutes. But um, we do wanna take it on a cruise. Just real quick, see if it wobbles at higher speeds, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Okay, we're on a little bit of a straightaway here. All right, just getting up to speed. I don't have any vibration. I mean, not a, nothing noticeable anyway. Um, RPM right now, let me get up to 55 and I'll tell you what we're sitting at. It does feel like it needs one more gear, doesn't it? Oh, definitely. Yeah, so this is 55 and we're running about 2,900 RPM, so... That's not good long term or it's okay? No, well, I mean, it's not good for fuel mileage. Uh, the engine turning that fast isn't great for long term either, but uh, we'll have to look at getting another gear in here. Or, yeah, the vibration is basically gone. Yeah. I mean, we're pretty much ready to get camping. Couple extra projects we need to do. Hopefully that thing fixes the ignition. We need to add a couple more seat belts. We've got the fridge here that's electric. And so we're actually hoping to put like a battery down here that would also give some heat to the kids back there. And we could power the fridge while we're driving. So that's one project we have on the list. Sorry, Alec bought some gummy bears. <laughs> Yeah, no vibration. Good job. Thanks. All that time on the floor might have paid off. Oh, uh, one would like to think I did it. I didn't do it all for nothing. We'll check it when we get home. Hopefully, no leaks there. And drive shaft feels good. Yeah, good. Are so, you gonna put that new thing in? Oh yeah, definitely. I think we got our new HEI ignition hooked up. Hopefully, it's the right way the first time. Apparently, there's a couple possible scenarios. But anyway, here's our. HEI ignition module. So we got our red wire hooked up to the positive side of our coil. The negative wire, which I used yellow, is hooked up to the negative side of the coil. Also, there's two ignition wires. The ignition source one and two from the ignition switch underneath the dash is also going to the positive side of the coil. So that should supply our 12 volts constant during cranking. And then this is our electronic ignition uh, distributor. There's a couple wires here that plug in to the, uh, the left side of the HEI. So I'm just hoping it starts. I mean, all right. Hey. How it's, about that, huh? It started without you letting off. It sure did. Whoa. That belts that I don't know, maybe I should have gotten like the old spice instead of the speed stick <laughs> or something. Right. Should I uh, kill it and try one more time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, just needed a pump. Yeah. The ignition works. ATI works. Yay! You did it. And it works. I am pretty thrilled, honestly. I got rid of the ballast resistor. I got rid of the electronic uh, ignition control module. All with the uh, the GM. I don't know. I mean, they did something right. I'll well, say that much. We'll see. Hopefully that's a, the ticket for us. Yeah, no, that would be sweet. I want it to hold up. I want it to start. The light just died. <laughs> I want it to start with consistency. Wouldn't that be nice for once? That would be nice. All right. All right, well, we're gonna hit the hay and we've got a little more work to do on Harvey. We also are super excited to get things rolling with this Holiday Rambler. So not sure exactly what's gonna be in our next video, but it's either gonna be something with the Rambler or maybe some ball joints and seat belts and 
there's work to do. Good stuff with Harvey. We want to get out camping, and I think Harvey's our best bet right now. So Probably so. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Take care.